Hello beautiful and welcome to this week's new makeup releases going on the wishlist or not This is the series on YouTube where every Sunday I come back and I chat about the new makeup releases, sneak peeks and announcements And I'll let you know what I think about them and then you can let me know what you think about them down in comments And that was a little lie <laughs> Also because last Sunday I did actually have a little bit of a break so I didn't have an upload last Sunday but we are back and I am guessing that this episode is going to be quite long. I even brought a drink about strawberry tea. And if you haven't been here before, my name is Angie, hello, I am a lover of fashion and makeup, especially colorful things. Very colorful today, I'm actually wearing one of the news that I'm going to be talking about. So if you want to see some more color on your timeline, if you want to see some more beauty videos on your timeline, I do upload several times a week, please do subscribe. Because we have a lot of fun here. And my cat is going crazy. Okay, so I did have a little bit of a break last week. I didn't have any makeup releases last week. Normally I upload these every Sunday and last week I just took a little bit of a break. I know people were saying like, this isn't much of a break because I was still uploading, but I actually had pre-filmed and pre-edited and just scheduled a bunch of things. So me, I actually got almost two weeks of a break, but you only noticed that there was one video missing on Sunday. So that's the way it is. I want to start with saying, first of all, big thank you. Cause I, during this time, we did sell out of the Club Nebula palette. This is the collaboration that I did with Kaleidos Makeup. This is the Club Nebula palette. Mine is very well used, but we did sell out, which was a little bit surprising because we did actually have quite a lot of units. We did think that we were gonna... We didn't think it's gonna last us a bit longer than it did. We are having a small restock again on the 17th. I will leave some info down below. There's gonna be quite a lot of things in this episode that I'm gonna be talking about, so I might continue with some of the info in the pinned comments. So if there's anything I'm talking about in this uh, episode that you wanna see more about, it's gonna be in the description box. If you don't see it in the description box, check the pinned comment because I think there is gonna be quite a lot of things I wanna talk about. But thank you so much for supporting me uh, in this launch. Even if you didn't buy it, just leaving a like, leaving a comment, reposting or resharing, anything, anything's just been, anything is support. Don't think you need to buy it to support me, but I am super grateful for the support. PR has started to reach people now, and I think when I'm filming this that all of the orders have been shipped, uh, or at least there's very few left. I do think that everything has been shipped. If you have any questions about your order or anything like that, do contact a Kaleidos customer service. Uh, I do not have any insight into the ordering system, just so you know. So I do, I do get some people asking me, but I... I I can't really help you with that uh, part of it, so to speak. So do contact Kaleidos if you have any questions about your order. But yeah, there's going to be a small restock on the 17th. I also made a playlist, and I will leave a link to that down below, where I will uh, save all the looks that I do, and also the looks that I see other people do with the palette. So if you want to get some inspiration, whether or not you own the palette, that playlist, I will link it down below. And I will also try and announce it on my community tab so that you can find some inspiration. If you have a video using the palette and I didn't include it in the playlist, please do reach out to me. Uh, it's easiest to reach out to me on Twitter or just send me a mail because uh, those are the places where I tend to like see everything. <laughs> most of, maybe I'm promising too much but most of it at least sometimes I miss something but it's not it's not intentional. So yeah I hope you are excited to see some more looks. I did film my fifth look that is coming next week. I'm having it I think on Wednesday I did a bit of a live update and I did a fifth look so that's also uh, gonna be live. Now the next thing I want to talk about is actually what's on my eyes today and as I am filming this this hasn't been announced but I happen to know that they are announcing like let me move my tea. Ah! I happen to know that they are announcing this collection before this video is going live. So what I'm wearing on my eyes today, let me just pull everything up, is the new collection by Uden's Eye. This, I have had this collection for quite some time and I'm ooh, almost dropping it. I'm so excited to be showing you. I am going to have separate videos on this. So I'm just quickly going to show you, um, just quickly going to show you what this collection is about. But tomorrow there's going to be, because there is one big palette and that is what I'm wearing today on my eyes. And this is the Norns. This is the big eyeshadow palette in the Norns series. Are you prepared? Because this is... So pretty. Look at this. Look at this. Ah, it's so pretty. So this is, uh, I think it's launching on February 5th. I will leave some info down below, but this is going to be a one palette, three looks, plus some swatches, of course, with this one, my cat, <laughs> tomorrow on my channel. So don't forget to subscribe to see that. There's also three single highlighters in this collection, and I will also be showing you these in tomorrow's video. This is the one that I'm wearing today. It is called Web of Destiny. 
This is the one that I'm wearing today and then there's also one that is called Veil of Future. It looks like this. And then there is a blue one that is called Spring of Life. This blue one. So I'm also going to be showing you these. Plus there is three mini palettes. Let me take these out of the of the slips. There is one for each Norn and this is the Urd Verdambi and Skuld. I'm saying this in Sweden because Odensei is a Swedish indie brand. This whole brand is based on Norse mythology. I am gonna have a separate video where I swatch and use these mini palettes. And it's also gonna be live next week, but it's not gonna be tomorrow. So this is Skuld. Uh, let me take this plastic out. And this is a mini palette with like dual toned sparkly metallics. This collection doesn't have any press glitters. Let me just tell you that right now. It doesn't have any press glitters. I also do have a, a discount code with Uden's Eye, which is Anjeshka. It will give you 10% off this collection once it launches. And of course, all of the other things. And then we have Verdandi, which is like a warm... This is like a neutral warm palette with a little pop of an icy blue here. And then we have my absolute favorite, which... Oh, let me get the slip back on. Which is the one that's called Urd. Oh my god, this is... Look at this. It is a cool toned foresty green. Do you see this? It is a mini palette with like foresty greens and then this very dark like plummy brown. Oh, I am so... Look at this one I haven't tried or even swatched yet. I'm so looking forward to be digging into this Urd. I think it's absolutely stunning. So... I'm gonna have a separate video on the mini palettes and tomorrow there's gonna be one on the big palettes. I'm just announcing it because I'm gonna give you more information on my channel. While I was having my little break, they also did launch their bullet lipsticks. I'm wearing one of them today. I'm wearing the one that's called... What is it called? I think it's the one that's called Fig something. Is that correct? Yeah, the Fig, Fig Jam one. I think I'm wearing that one. It is three cream ones and three matte ones. So I'm also going to be showcasing these in the videos next week. I don't want to linger on this too much because I know I'm already preparing to do some dedicated videos on these. But just know that Uden's Eye has come out with some new products and they're also coming out with some new products. I'm pretty sure it's the 5th of February. And if you do order from uh, Uden's Eye, don't forget to use the discount code so you can get 10% off. You don't have to use mine, of course, if you don't want to. But if you do, thank you so much for the support. And I will say, I really like Odin's Eyes brand, but I am floored with how beautiful this collection looks. So if you're even the slightest interested, I would definitely say to tune in on the Odin's Eye videos next week because I think you're going to be very impressed with how these look. Did I talk about the Natasha Denona Mini Love Collection? Let me just scooch a bit. Scoochie, scoochie. I mean, scoochie, scoochie. Uh, did I talk about the Natasha Denona Mini Love Collection in my last episode? Do I need to look at that? Hold. I don't think I did. I don't think I talked about it. I did buy that one. It already reached me and I already made a video. So I will leave a link to that video down below. I do know that that collection is available at Sephora now. So I will leave a link to where you can buy it at Sephora and also leave a link to my video if you want to see swatches, if you want to see a first impression, and if you want to see some dupes or whether or not they are dupes. So I will have all of that in that video. I highly recommend you to check it out in case you were interested in this collection because I feel myself that I got quite a lot of info into that video. So I'm also not going to be lingering on that one, even though I hadn't talked about it before. I mean, I already own it. I already made a video on it. I will leave it a link down below. There has been a lot of things released and announced since last time I filmed. And if there's something that you feel like I'm not touching on that you think I should be, do let me know in the comments. But I will try and just touch on the most interesting or the things that are most interesting to me. So if there's something you feel like I'm missing, it's a lot. Let's start with our <laughs> weekly Colourpop segment. Since my last, I think Colourpop has released three, I was gonna say three things, but that is not true. Three collections, because that is the Colourpop way. Is that even true or is it more? I think it is three collections. Honestly, at this point, who knows? But what they have released... First of all, let's talk about the Animal Crossing thing. They released Quads, those lip tint pencils. I don't like that formula. I even mentioned it as uh, one of the, I think, worst of 20... I don't remember. Worst products of 2019? I don't remember. I don't personally think that that is a good product. So I wouldn't want that. I love quads and I hope they make more quads. I will say though that I personally... I didn't pick any of this up. There are two reasons. There are three reasons. First of all, I didn't pick any of this up because I don't play Animal Crossing. And I know that this is mostly like a 
you buy into the nostalgia of the franchise and stuff like that. Listen, if this had been a World of Warcraft collection, we would have been singing in a whole different tune. I would have tried to buy all of it. I would have stabbed the bitch to be able to get all of it. But I don't play Animal Crossing. And I also... I don't think that any of these are unique to my collection. The only thing that I really thought was like cute is the purple and the uh, mint quad. But all these quads has one press glitter. I don't... I don't like despise press glitters, but I don't use them enough to want to have them in a quad. Uh, I've said this before, like I, I don't want... Like I understand that there are people who love press glitters, but I wish that we would just have them on the side. Why didn't they just do three like three quads and then one glitter quad on the side. Why didn't they just do that? I Like then people could buy it if they wanted to and the collectors would still buy all of them. But for me, it's not unique enough to my collection. I mean, I have a purple palette. I have two purple palettes, like the Nine Pan palettes on Colourpop. I like them a lot. None of them have press glitters. I have the Mint To Be from Colourpop, the Nine Pan. I also really like that one. It also doesn't have press glitters. And for the third, like these are the I wouldn't have bought it either way but as a third reason Colourpop did send me a mail saying they were gonna send this to me in PR um I wouldn't have bought it I'm just gonna be totally I wouldn't have bought it even if I wasn't sent this as PR I wouldn't have bought it the blushes are the exact same colors as Colourpop always have when they release blushes I feel they're either peach or pink or peach and pink like they're peach and or pink um so for me, this is a... And I know a lot of people also were expressing that they were disappointed in the lack of inclusivity in this collection and that they felt like uh, these colors would only work on a certain uh, amount of skin tones. I would love to hear, because I've seen a lot of like different perspectives on this like this issue. I feel a part of being a good ally is to just sometimes shut my mouth and just listen. So I do know that a large portion of my audience is people of color. I would love to hear how do you feel about color pop and inclusivity? Like what would you like to change? If this was your ideal, like if you had a say in an ideal situation, what would you change? Because I want to be able to see it from the perspective that matters which is your perspective. <laughs> That's the perspective that matters. And I just want to hear your thoughts. So let me know in the comments because I know that that was a lot of the criticism towards the collections lately from Colourpop has been that the powder product hasn't really been uh, suited for a darker skin tone. So I would love to hear like, what would you want? Because they did release this other collection, which is the Wild Child collection, which is a nude collection that is a little bit more deeper and richer in tone. It doesn't, the eyeshadow palette doesn't have any of those, you know, those brow bone highlighter for the white booty gurus, um, typical shades, the shades that I never use either, even though I fit into, <laughs> into that category. It's more the mid-tone and the deeper tones. And then they have two blushes, one a bit darker and one a bit lighter, three su super shock shadows and three brown lipsticks. I, if I liked neutral sh things, it's not really my cup of tea. I probably would have like this. I like more like deeper, richer tones. But a lot of people were saying that they felt like this was pandering to the POC community. And again, I would love to hear your opinions. Like, what do you think? Because I know for a fact, uh, I do get mail sometimes. I do. I. I I do get Colourpop PR and I do talk sometimes to the people in charge of PR at Colourpop and I know for a fact that they watch my videos from time to time because I have seen sometimes that they have made comments uh, regarding <laughs> me sometimes bashing the things that they uh, that they release because they have commented uh, uh, on that in my uh, in the mails that they're sending me. Uh, not that I really care, like I'm still going to say whatever I, I want to say, but I'm just saying that there is a big chance that Colourpop might be seeing this and might be reading your comments and I... I just want to have a discussion because I feel like it's so important to let everyone be heard and I just want to get different kinds of perspectives of this uh, of this whole matter. So let me know what you feel, let me know what you think about it because they also released like, listen, I told you, there's a lot of Colourpop. This is the Melrose collection and this is a collection based out of LA. It's another neutral collection. <laughs> Another neutral collection and this is again the that obligatory peach and or <laughs> pink blush. I think the packaging of this is beautiful. Isn't it funny that both BH Cosmetics and Colourpop did a Los Angeles based collection with the same kind of color scheme on the packaging? with so few weeks in between. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not saying they're copying because it's impossible to copy with that few like weeks in between, but isn't it interesting that that is 
that is seems to be the theme. Again, if I like neutrals, I think I would like this eyeshadow palette. I don't think it's ugly in any way, shape, or form. I don't like the Luxe glosses. I think it is an atrocious form. <laughs> That is not for me. I like that the blushes have the uh, cardboard packaging. That is what I like the most with the when they do cheek products. I like that a lot more than I like their plastic packaging. I actually kind of dislike their plastic packaging. I wish it was just disappear. So let me know your thoughts down below. Remember to keep it respectful. I know my audience. I know my demographic. I know that there is very few people watching my channel is actually under the age of 18. This is a grown-up channel for a grown-up audience. So let's have a grown-up uh, conversation about it. I think we're all here to learn and to better ourselves and to have a wider perspective on things. And that's at least where I'm coming from. There is a new eyeshadow palette being announced by Dominique Cosmetics. It's called a Transition Palette. I kind of like that she called it the Transition Palette and it's still being the wide range of shades that it is from a very like milky almost white shade to a black. Dare I say that this is what the Orgy palette should have been? I mean, this is a matte nude palette that goes from light to dark, but isn't as repetitive as the Orgy palette was. And it's also not as big and it's also not as expensive, even though this is $48, but I mean, it's not $60. This is launching... Oh, it's already available because it's launching the day that I'm filming this. I... This isn't for me. This isn't the kind of makeup that I wear. Um, I, I, I find it hard to be excited about something like this, but I do get where she's coming from. And at some point, I think every brand needs to have a neutral palette, even though she already has a neutral palette, doesn't she? Isn't the Latte palette a neutral palette? Honestly, I don't know. I'm just saying that I'm sure people are excited about this. Um, this bitch is not. One Size Beauty is a brand that's, from my knowledge, a brand that's not available here in Europe. I will say, not that sad about that. They, I'm, I, what is this brand doing? What is, what is the niche of this brand? What are they trying to... Uh, what kind of brand are they trying to be? Because now they're releasing a primer and a under eye patches. Huh? This brand is just all over the place. Makeup remover, eyeshadow palette, under eye patches. Like, what are, what are you trying to be? Like, how are you going to get someone excited about under eye patches? Huh? I do not understand. A pack of six patches for $25. Ooh, those patches better, like, age me backwards. Age me backwards. The primer is $30. No. No, no, no. Yeah, you don't need to come to Europe. We're fine. We are. We're okay. Dragon Beauty uh, refuses to let go of the dragon eggs and now she's releasing a s birthday collection. <sighs> Lip glosses and then this five pan eyeshadow palette. I think these are as expensive as the other one was because I'm pretty sure that these were pretty expensive. I don't dislike, I love a black in a palette. I don't dislike this color scheme, but from what I remember, they're like $30 for a five pan palette uh, with this ugly packaging. I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. And also the award for the laziest makeup collection ever goes to Too Faced that, that is doing a collaboration with I think four or five different influencers and that they are doing their own packaging for Bed and Sex Mascara. Imagine, <laughs> this is such a cash grab. I know a lot of people are like talking about everything being a cash grab. And I mean, this is a business. People are here to make money. It's not like people are here for charity. That's not what the makeup community is about. But doing a collab with influencers where they can take a mascara that's already existing and the only thing they get to change is the packaging. Why is anyone buying that I no I don't I don't like that either oh we need to talk about Auric Beauty oh this announced like hours after I filmed I'm so annoyed with myself oh, and it already like filmed and edited and this was like announced and I was like eh. but Auric 
Samantha Ravindal's brand has been announced and it's been uh, released already. The launch has already been. I honestly don't know if it's sold out or not. I'm guessing it did because usually brands like this, it tends to sell out. I didn't buy any of it. First I was thinking I was gonna buy because there was like a glowy, like the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless blah blah blah, the one that can be used like a light tinted glowy primer on its own or under foundation or as a highlighter but the thing is that I have the one from Charlotte Tilbury and I am not using that one enough so me buying another one it didn't seem smart and also I had to buy it from US which means that I would pay I think the shipping was like $15 and then I will have to pay like pay taxes on top of that so it would probably be a hundred dollar primer and I love you Samantha but I cannot be spending a hundred dollars on a primer that I already own basically the same kind of a product and there was like some duo eyeshadows I'm not the, as you can tell, not the one and done cream shadow with some powder on top kind of, kind of a gal. That's not the look that I'm going for. So as much as I love Samantha, as much as I love her brand and wish her all the success, um, this launch wasn't for me. It wasn't for me. I will try the brand in the future. Just not these kind of things. But I mean, me and Samantha, we do our makeup in such a different way as well. So it's not surprising to me that uh, a lot of the things that you, she probably released within her brand isn't for me. But this is available. I will link it down below in case you're interested. But she is marketing herself as a luxury brand. So the prices are pretty up there. I don't mind spending extra money to get something bougie but not when I'm buying things that I either know I won't use or buying things that I like already own and, and already not using enough. It, I mean I don't need to be that stupid. Oh my there are so many things I want to talk about but I just <laughs> I don't have time for all of them. I have lipstick on it. No I'm good. There has been a new collection by Juvia's Place. This is a Juvia's Place and Vanessa Gima? I hope I'm not mispronouncing that. I'm doing the best I can. This is a very warm neutral palette and there's no press glitters. These are actually two metallics. One of them is a bit more marble. I will say this does look very pretty. I didn't pick this one up and I will talk a little bit about this in my like monthly haul. I tried. I tried to really buy less and I still, there is one thing. Is that true? Yes, there is two things. Two things that I have bought that I actually haven't used yet. So I really, really, really do not need to buy any more things. I mean, this one showed up, the one that I have in front of me, the the like collection from Uda's Eye, and I was just so excited. So it like skipped the line a bit, but I don't want to buy more things right now. And this isn't my personal like perfect color scheme. Although I will say I really do, do love Juvia's Place uh, quality. And there's also two lip glosses in here. And I think that I've seen two of my friends, uh, Karen Harris and Heather Austin, do looks with this palette and swatch it. And it looks really beautiful. It's just not 100% my cup of tea. This is one of those things that I might end up picking up in the future. But Right now, it's not 100% for me, but I'm excited that they're doing some more neutral leaning things as well because it's been pretty colorful lately. So I think it's smart to balance it out with something that's a little bit more uh, neutral leaning. This is very confusing to me. Pixie always does, what do they call it? They call it the Pixie Pretties. Yeah, every year they do like collaborations in like a bunch. They do like a group collaboration. <laughs> They always come up with their collaborations as a group thing, once every year or twice a year, I'm not even sure. And I'm, I would love, hmm, I would love to hear the premises, like, what are the premises for this collaboration? Like, are they free to do whatever they want? Or is it like, we want you to do something like, it's like, because I find it hard to believe that someone wants to make cream rouge palette and it's just so many similar shades and I find it just so hard to believe that that is the thing you would pick to do. A 1 to 25 kind of similar and sometimes very repetitive cream blush shades in this super super small pans which makes it a bit hard to pick up with anything to be honest. I'm just a bit surprised that that is what you would pick to do. Then there is a um, 
Makeup by Denise Mind Your Own Glow Palette, 9 Pan a Glowy Blush Highlighter Palette. And then it is the Promise Tamang, I think that's her name. And she is doing a Shape Shifter Palette. It is a face sculpting contour highlight. Aren't we a bit over the contour palettes? It's also very confusing to me. And then it's Tina Young making an eyeshadow palette, which is a warm neutral palette with a pop of turquoise. And that, maybe this is like people's makeup aesthetics. I just, it surprises me in 2021 that this is, this is it. I don't want to be rude. I don't want to be, I'm just, I don't follow these people. So maybe this is exactly the kind of things that they are reaching for. It just surprises me a little bit. It really does. I will say though that that uh, blush highlighter 9 pan palette, that is the one that looks most up my alley. I do love a glowy blush and I love layering blush and highlighter glow like all of. <laughs> so I do think that that one looks really really pretty but it's not really for me. There is a new palette from Violet Voss. I will say that this I've been I've been mean to Violet Voss lately. I'm sorry, Violet Voss. This front is probably the best front you've ever made on a palette. Okay? <laughs> I do like the front of this palette. I like the uh, green kind of a packaging. But I'm very surprised though that the palette is called Olive You Forever and there is literally one olive green metallic in this palette. I, I, maybe they're naming it Olive You Forever because of the, the color of the packaging, but couldn't you have just thrown in one olive green matte? Because there is like warm neutrals, a black, and then there's a random pink shimmer. This is like the Huda Beauty khaki haze palette all over again. There, where, where's the olive? Where's the olive in the olive palette? I'm confused. You seem to have missed something. <laughs> I, maybe it's awesome quality. What do I know? It's $34 is available now. I will link it down below. It's not for me though because I mean I love the idea of an olive palette. Really I do but this isn't that really. Pat McGrath does love her Divine Rose things and now she has made a Divine Rose 2 collection which is the second palette that she released and she just made a full collection around that. I think she did the exact same thing on the Divine Rose 1 palette. She's bringing back the Divine Rose 2 in that limited edition pink packaging and I saw a lot of people being really excited about that. And then there is a pinky quad, a pinky highlighter and some lip products. Uh, these are all pinks. I don't personally want any of this. I do think that this palette looks really, really pretty. I just know that it it's too expensive to get a lot of use in my collection. That, that's basically the reason why I didn't buy it because I, I, I can personally dupe this in my collection and I know for most things that I buy, I can dupe them in my collection, but this is just very expensive and I don't think I would get my money's worth out of using this. I love the packaging of the highlighter. That looks really, really beautiful. But yeah, this isn't for me. I think it's available. I will link it down below. Let me know, are you excited to see the limited edition pink packaging come back? Because I saw a lot of people being super, super excited about that. Oh, let's talk about this new uh, Tammy Tanuka palette. This is, what is this palette called? Wait, wait, wait. I need to have a better picture that's like not in, in Russian. This is the Wanderous Eyed Wild Cat palette. This is a pastel palette in the six pan format from uh, Tammy Tanuka. I did try one of her palettes and I thought it was really good. Not my absolute favorite shimmer formula. I like something that's a little bit more shimmery, glittery, sparkly on personal preference, but and, and I like also to deepen up look. So this isn't for me in any way, shape or form, but I do know that a lot of people were interested in trying her brand. And if you like more subdued looks or pastels, maybe this could be for you. I'm uh, pretty sure that this is already available. It might be sold out, but I do think she restocks things. This wasn't just a perfect release for me. If she releases something in a perfect color scheme, I might buy it, but yeah, this one wasn't uh, perfect for me. I also wanted to let you know that Davina has had a restock of her website. I don't know if it's sold out now, but she did also come up with two new shades, which was Hemisphere and Phenomenon. I think both of them are uh, more like multi-chrome shadows. So she is expanding her multi-chrome uh, range with two new shadows. They both look really, 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 really pretty. I 
I love Davina quality and I do have a code with Davina. It is Agnieszka20. I always have my codes and like links and all of that down in the description box in case you're interested in saving some money when buying from indie brands. I, I want to get more use of my single shadows before I buy more. I say as I have bought some single shadows from European brands, but I made it a promise uh, on my channel to feature more European indie brands in 2021. So that is what I'm trying to do. But I really, and every time I see like these kind of swatches, I'm reminded like, oh, I really need to dig out my Davinas and play with them more because they really are something else. They're so, so pretty. I've also been really mean to MAC lately. Sorry, Mac. I really do think that this collection is really nice. This is the Spring 2021 Sakura Inspire. This is called the Black Sherry Collection. I think they have made like Sherry Blossom themed collections. Is this the second or the third year in a row? I kind of feel like it's the third year in a row. I know Mac is very into expanding on the Asian market right now. This looks beautiful. And this is, this is what I mean when I say that they need to take it one step further with the packaging because the packaging of this is beautiful. And those extra dimension uh, blushes are a stunning glowy blush formula. I already own two. I definitely do not need a third one. <sighs> but I will say these look beautiful. If you are looking for a glowy blush and if you like this kind of packaging, this formula is stunning for glowy blushes. I very much recommend it. It's beautiful. But yeah, I don't need another one. But yeah, I do think that they did that collection good and I'm pretty sure that my friend Kara C told me that the MAC collection will be coming to North America in March. So I'm guessing that's the same with Europe as well in case you were wondering but it looks really pretty. I'm pretty sure it's available in uh, Asia already. Oh, Danessa Myrix has come out with even more of these twin flames. Now there are more like iridescent shades and these are like multi-dimensional multi-chrome topper liquid shadows. She has come out with five more shades. I'll try and put the swatches up here so you can see. These are $26 each. I Think that these are available at Beautylish. I will link Danessa Myricks at Beautylish down below. It's a really nice place to shop Danessa Myricks from. I have shopped Danessa Myricks from Beautylish. I do really like Beautylish as a retailer. I think that these look really pretty and this is one of those products that I'm like, if I'm ordering something from Beautylish, I could totally see myself like adding something like this to my cart and being like, oh, I want to try this because I do think that these look super, super pretty and I love how she's been using them in looks on her Instagram stunning. Here is something else that's really interesting. These probably will not come to Europe because the last collection that uh, Sephora did with their own lipstick formula that they call Lip Stories, it never came to Sweden, which is a shame because they had that like yellowy nude that I really wanted, but it is what it is. But now they're doing Zodiac signs two years later. I guess no one told Sephora that that's not popping anymore, but they're doing one shade for each Zodiac sign. Some of these are gorgeous. I'm an Aquarius, they really did us Aquarius is Aquarius dirty because it's a gold, metallic gold. Really? Metallic gold? That's what we get? Taurus is beautiful, Aries is beautiful. Some of these shades are wonderful and this is a great formula, not the metallic. I, I'm not going to be here sitting saying like, oh, the metallic, skip the metallic. But the cream and the matte, wonderful formula actually an amazing formula and if you have watched my lipstick declutters these past two years you know that I've saved that formula several years because it is an amazing formula. I really do recommend it. There's actually one thing that I did buy. Should I end with that one? How long have I been filming? I don't want to make this episode three million years long but we are there is a lot of things that we could be talking about. But not everything is interesting. Let's just Let's not pretend that everything is interesting. This is, this would have been interesting if this had been released three years ago. This is the Suva Beauty Toppers palette. This is already available. It is also available at Beauty Bay. I will link that down below. This is $35, which is pretty expensive for four topper shades. But this is, you remember the uh, Caf on the Alchemist palette, you know, that triangle that had like those iridescent topper shades. This is exactly that, just, a lot of years later. I don't know how many people need something like this in their life now because you don't have to use a topper eyeshadow like this. You can use any iridescent highlighter, colored highlighter or colored topper. You can find them in so many palettes now. 
if you have bought any kind of indie single shadows, you probably own something like this. Even in the palette, the one that I did with Kaleidos, we have one of them. We have one of them here, this uh, blue purple duochrome. There are just so many right now, and in this palette as well, I mean, in this palette as well, there is one. Uh, it's right here. It's called Pink Chameleon. It is a like a pink duochrome. What I'm trying to say is that I'm not sure who is right now buying a quad of four iridescent toppers for $35 in spring 2021. I'm not sure who's looking for that. And I, I'm not saying that to be rude, but Suva, Suva is in the same category as Sugar Pill. They're falling behind. They have good ideas and they have nice things. They're just a bit late. They're a bit late to the party. I don't hate this. This is this is cute, uh, and I, apparently a lot of people have been asking for this, but it's it's a little late. It's a little late, but it is available in case you are interested in buying something like this in a quad formula. I will link it down below because I'm sure it's great quality. It's just I'm not, not sure who's really looking for it. Oh, a lot of you were asking me about this as well. This is the a Lunar New Year collection from BH Cosmetics. They did this as a collaboration with Shi Shi Yang. Is is that is that correct? I am so 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 sorry. We never have names with an X in my country, so I honestly don't know how to say that. I am so sorry. Chi Chi? Maybe it's Chi Chi. See, I I'm so sorry. I don't know how to say that. Really should go and check that up. But this is an eyeshadow palette with 21 colors for $21. And then there is a liquid eyeliner for $8 and fall mink lashes for $10 and some glitter gel for $12. The palette looks pretty, but there's a lot of pressed glitters in here. There's a couple of reasons why I didn't pick this up. First of all, I have two palettes from BH Cosmetics that I'm right now currently trying out and testing and wanting to be reviewing. Did have the Lost in Los Angeles palette up this Friday in case you were interested in seeing a video about that. I also have the Garnet palette. I still haven't used that because, and you will hear that in Wednesday's video, it's been a lot lately. So I didn't want to pick up another palette. Even though I like their quality, I don't want more press cutters and I just, I opted out. Will say though that I know that my friend Kara C did pick this one up. So if you're interested in seeing looks and seeing what, seeing what she thinks about it, that will be up on her channel because I know she picked it up. And I have heard from her that she thought that it was good quality. It just didn't excite me enough to want to bring that into my collection because I just knew I wouldn't be able to do it justice. It's been a lot. Let's talk about this one. This one is available at Cult Beauty. I'm sure it's available at a bunch of different places. I will I will link Cult Beauty if you're in Europe and I will also see whether it's available at in Sephora maybe in US. And this is the Charlotte Tilbury Hyaluronic Happy Kiss range. These look beautiful. These look like the Linda Hull by Fantastics which is like a glossy balm lipstick, semi-transparent but still colorful glossy lip hybrid. Those were a lot of words to describe a lipstick, but I think that there's a lot of brands right now that are releasing like glossy balm hybrid lipsticks with some color because I feel like that is what people are going to go for. These look beautiful. Again, this is one of those things that if I was ordering something from Cult Beauty, I could definitely see myself chucking one of these into my bag because I want to try them. They are in quite a few shades. I think it's eight shades and they're 25 pounds. What is that? Like $28 or something? I'm not entirely sure because this one is in pounds, but they look beautiful. And there is one that is orange. I promise if I buy this, I won't buy the orange because I always do. I always do, but I promise I won't buy the orange. <laughs> I always do. Because NARS also have the soft matte tinted lip balm and this is a tinted lip balm that is matte. I find that very very interesting. So this is a wash of nude color for diffused blurred effect and it is like from a light to a deep nude. I think the range of these nudes is really really good. There are like some beige, some pink, some red and then like some more deeper ones as well. These are $28 each. These are available at Sephora. I haven't seen these in Europe yet but again this is this this is matte lip balm. I find that a bit fascinating. I find it a bit fascinating. I kind of want to see what it's all about, but I don't need anything. This is also coming soon. This is from Kosas. This is a, or is it already available? 
It's coming to Sephora February 9th. I will link down below, you'll be able to get it. This is from Kosas. This is the Set Baked Setting and Smoothing Talc Free Vegan Powder. Is that the name? Because that is a bad name. They need to work on that. Ugh. 10 shades, shade range, really good. I, I am intrigued if this is the same luminous finish as the like the the bronzer hat or if this is a matte matte because if this has a bit of luminosity to it i could be interesting if there's no luminosity to it i'm not interested but it depends setting and smoothing i could be intrigued i could be intrigued but i'm not i'm not saying maybe maybe We'll see. Okay, let's talk about the last thing, the thing that I actually did end up buying a couple of things from, and this is that Kiko Milano released their, I think this is either their, no, this is their spring collection, because they already had a Valentine's collection. They always release two big collections, like, they have a pretty big, what, what am I gonna say, like, standard assortment, like the non-limited edition, like the, what do you call it? The, 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 the permanent range, wow. Wow, I need a drink, not tea. They have a very big permanent range with quite a few things. So I don't understand when they're doing collections like this, why they keep coming out with like so many weird things like brow products and, and why they're always coming out with like bronzers. I mean, they, they, are, they are worse than Colourpop when it comes to big collections. They're too... The collections are too big. I'm also quite surprised because uh, the face palette only came in one color and I was pretty sure that the last collection that they had with the face palette had two colors. I don't know. This is the thing. They have so many shades to choose from in the permanent range and then when they come up with these limited editions, it's like they really need to work on that. The reason why I picked up a couple of these things is because I want to see if it's the same quality because it was the same kind of products as it was in the Tuscan Sunshine collection which was last spring's um, uh, spring release and that was such a good collection. So I bought one of the six pan eyeshadow palettes, one of the blushes, I didn't buy the highlighter and I didn't buy the finishing powder because I'm pretty sure that this is the exact same. It's like a translucent, very firmly packed. I will show the one that I had in the video if I do a video about this uh, from last year. And there were so many things that were like glowy pearls, several different lip products, brow products, mascara, like there was a bunch of things, glosses, shimmery liquid eyeshadows like maybe they don't need to have this many things in every collection and instead just try to make the things that they are releasing really good or expand on their although they are expanding on their permanent range as well because i did see a couple of things come out like i think they brought out a new foundation permanent for the permanent range not too long ago i didn't pick that one up though because i did not even know the foundation but yeah i'm thinking about doing a video on this um because I want to see if it's as good as the other collection from last year. I don't know if this is available in US yet, but I will link down below where you'll be able to get it in US if you are interested. I didn't pick up the face palette because I don't use face palettes and also like one color, like what is that? Like no, no, that's not for me. I know that some of these brands plan ahead in the future for like sometimes two years in the future. Uh, and it's crazy, the more you get to see on the back end of what's going on, the, the, more, you, the more you know, the more you learn on how long uh, it really takes to plan out and the bigger the brands, the longer time it takes. But I really do hope that they will... Because, and th that's the thing, if this is the same things that they released last spring, which is the new packaging, then that's it. Then that, that's all I need to know about the brand. Then I've tried everything. Because if they're releasing the same things again and again and again, just a new packaging every year, then what's the point? Like, what's the point? So, I am. Uh, I was curious, so I picked it up. If you're interested, let me know in the comments. If you're not interested, I won't do a video on it. I mean, I, I do videos on things that you are interested in. I mean, of course, if I'm interested in something, I'll do a video on it. But if nobody wants to see it, I'll just try it on my own <laughs> and report back. So you're gonna have to let me know what you think. Ugh. I'm gonna scooch it to the side. Like I said, I will have a video on this one tomorrow. I haven't even finished filming as, I, as I'm saying this. No pressure. And I will also have a video on the three mini palettes that will also be next week. Plus, ooh, plus I am having a video next week doing a fifth look with this palette. A bit of a get ready with me. 
I am gonna have my monthly haul as well. I usually have it the first week of a new month, but it won't be next week, I don't think. I don't think. But thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm sorry if I feel a bit like low energy, but I am, am actually a bit low energy. I didn't sleep that good this night. <sighs> it's way past lunchtime and I still haven't had lunch. And it's, you see how light it is? That is not sunshine. That is snow and this bitch does not want to go out in the snow. So I've been really procrastinating getting lunch because I'm cold. But thank you so much for being here. I hope you're having an amazing Sunday. I hope you didn't miss me too much. But I will have videos next week and next Sunday I'm coming back with a new makeup releases. Bye!